I was born and raised in Chicago, Illinois. It is common for kids living on the South Side to commute to school using Chicago Transit Authority as their main source of public transportation. While in seventh grade, I experienced a life-threatening experience while on my way to school on the CTA. It was a typical day. The station was packed with early morning commuters heading to work and school. But then I noticed a man staring at me intensely while riding the escalator to the bus platforms. It was the kind of stare that you knew your bones signified evil intent. I started to panic. I began to think, how could I avoid and dodge him and safely catch my bus? However, my attempt to elude him did not work. Somehow he located the bus I was riding and hopped on. I knew I was in danger when he proceeded to exit the bus at my stop. Although my school was a few blocks away from the bus stop, I suddenly felt the weight of being a young black girl all alone in one of the scariest situations imaginable. The mincing man began walking the direction of my school out ahead of me, but clearly still staying close. There was no one visible in the neighborhood I could look towards for protection. I kept slowing my pace to keep a barrier between us and to create some distance for my getaway. But suddenly, the man stopped walking, abruptly turned toward me, and began to approach. I was frozen in my shoes as he asked if he could touch me. The proportion of missing black women and girls are steadily growing in the Chicagoland area, while public reports on their cases from law enforcement are filled with vague information or very few details. There are dozens of active cases still unsolved, with very little progress being made by the Chicago Police Department. The victims' families are discouraged, angry, hurt, and still in disbelief that their loved ones are not receiving the same level of media coverage as other notable cases, usually involving young white female victims. To address this injustice, in 2020, Damon Lamar Reed, a fantastically talented Chicago hip hop artist and muralist, started painting an eye catching, vivid series of portraits titled The Still Searching Project. His artwork depicts two decades of unsolved cases of missing black women and girls. They were mothers, sisters, and daughters. Some of them were just like I was a young black girl all alone in one of the scariest situations imaginable. I was fortunate as in the moment of the most panic and fear, a car came down the alleyway, distracted the man and I was able to run away and escape my predator. But I want to document and amplify this project because my story could have been different. I could have become one of Damon's paintings, a missing face waiting to be found, with a family waiting for justice and a life deserving of a voice. In the following trailer from the film I'm producing about the Still Searching Project, you'll hear Damon Lamar re explain his artistic process in creating several of these incredible and moving painted portraits of missing black women. They were filmed in the style called verite, which is a genre of a film that emphasizes realism and naturalism. The work is an emotional journey with the in-depth look of the lives of the lost women through their loved ones' memories and storyboarded through animations. Still Searching is an impact-driven project it is our hope that the film reaches communities that aren't aware of these overlooked stories. We want to use this film to support the Still Searching Project, to help families share their loved ones' stories and keep their investigations active and their memories alive. To learn more, follow DamonLamarReed.com and StillSearchingDocumentary.com to learn about the Still Searching Project, support the film, and raise awareness of these missing women and girls through your social media channels. These black women deserve to have their stories told. We are working to help the world recognize their faces, to give them their voices, and to let women and their families know that they are not forgotten and we are still searching. You know, we still searching for Kia. We're doing all that we can to bring awareness, keep our name going, letting us know anything that they may know or heard. You know, just to bring Kiara and her baby home. Okay. Keep 
put her name out there, you know, any chance you get, you know, just where's Kiara. So, you know, we can lose more help from the police department for one. And the community is doing a lot, you know, a lot of our friends and family are still posting and, you know, we all praying that Kiara can come home safe and we just not going to give up. I remember my mom had posted a picture and it was about my aunt Valerie and my two cousins, Shantia and Weiwei. They had got murdered in 1982 and nobody has ever solved that case. That kind of brought me looking up information on like unsolved cases. And something just popped in my head that, you know, I could actually use my art to start bringing awareness to the situation. When I first got started on the series, the first that I decided to do were uh, Kiara Coles. You know, it was a video of her, and she was kind of walking down the street in her postal uniform, and then she kind of just disappeared, you know, off of the screen. And actually, just recently, her mother came out and said that video that, you know, we've been thinking for years was her is not even actually her. And I did the Bradley Sisters because it was actually one of the biggest cases of missing girls in Chicago. From what I read, they left a note at home saying that they were going by the school and to the store. And after that, that was actually the last time they were seen. I started working on a portrait of uh, Vingette Teague. She was in the Robert Taylor homes and she was actually uh, maybe about two years old. And they were having I guess kind of like a party or a celebration. Her mom, she asked one of the other family members to watch her. Then, you know, when her mom came back, she looked up and she was kind of like, okay, where's, you know, my daughter? And nobody could find her. And, you know, she's been missing since then. For this steel searching project, it's to raise awareness for the missing women but also to raise awareness to women who are here. You know, hey, we need to be aware. We need to work as a community to stop this. So the artwork that Damon is creating through this Steel Searching Project, it amplifies the issues that are going on have black girls who are going missing. As long as we can amplify these other cases, then we can use that to say this needs our immediate attention. And not only that, but we also must protect the girls and provide safe spaces for our girls. Anytime black girls are portrayed in the news, we're portrayed as being unworthy, um, violent, hypersexual. And so when we go missing, the stories are always finding out what illicit things have they been involved in. You know, all these things that would devalue and dehumanize us. And that's the first thing that media does. They don't go to who was this person, who loved this person, what were the joyous things that they did. It takes away any compassion from the audience immediately. And the story moves from finding this person to now villainizing this person. The main thing that I really want to show with these portraits, I want it to look like them or to kind of catch their, you know, likeness or their spirit. I knew that I wanted the colors to be bright. And then once you move past, you know, the colors, you want people to get that certain um, emotional attachment. A lot of times that could be like in the eyes with the paint strokes. Just creating something that's aesthetically pleasing is, you know, my first contact to inspire. Sometimes somebody may walk by a mural and it may just change their mood, you know, they may smile. Sometimes, you know, I've had people cry. I definitely want them to feel an emotion. And I want it to be something that's beautiful, something that their families could actually look at and, you know, it can bring a smile to their face. If I did one picture and the word got out and some information came back and it helped solve even one case, to me that would all be worth it.